So I've been hearing a whole lot about this Insta360 stuff lately, especially since I watch a lot of car videos, I've seen a lot of their 360 camera stuff on videos already. But when Insta360 reached out to me and said, hey, we have a 4K AI powered smart webcam, are you interested in taking a look? Heck yeah, I'm interested in taking a look. So today we're gonna look at the Insta360 Link and their mini tripod to see whether or not this is something that is worth making it on your desk, especially with live streaming and Twitch popularity and all that today and YouTube Live and all that. And you know what? To really put the camera to the test, we got two of them and this video is being shot on one. So regarding the setup, we actually have our main camera right here, which is an FS5, which is what we shoot all of our videos on. But we're gonna go ahead and use the Insta360 as our A cam, because I wanna give you guys a really good idea of how it does with like YouTube compression and stuff. Um, we are in a controlled lighting environment, which is perfect for obviously any sort of webcam. But with the popularity of, you know, live streaming services and stuff now, uh, we've watched a lot of videos about this and we really came to the conclusion that this would make an amazing main camera for anyone doing fairly stationary type of videos on YouTube or Twitch or whatever platform maybe that you're creating videos for. Well, we need to start with an unboxing here. We gotta see exactly what it comes with. So the Insta360 mini two-in-one tripod, um, it's just that. It, it is a tripod that has foldable legs that you can also use. And I didn't have a knife handy because, you know, thinking ahead of time is not how I do things. It's got foldable legs on here, so you can use it you know, for any sort of small camera that you would be doing vlogs or whatever with, right? There's no battery in the Insta360. It does control itself through a USB-C cable connected to a laptop or a computer or a desktop. I wanna point out the cable that you saw attached to this right now, the gray one, is not the cable that comes with the, the camera. It's highly recommended that you use the cam cable that comes with the camera. However, this is a full data USB-C that works perfectly with it. We need a longer cable for this particular setup. But the cable that comes with it is, is plenty long to be able to use attached to your monitor, hooked up to your computer computer or whatever, um, we'll show that with the unboxing. But here is the mini tripod. It's got the fairly standard small camera mount. You've got this guy, which just snaps into there. And then you've got the wing nut um, type of, well, clamping mechanism to clamp it tight so you can put it in any position. This is just nice to have for any camera that uses a standard quarter inch thread, uh, whether it be a webcam or a small action cam, because they do have action cams, which are battery powered, that is highly recommended if you're doing 360 videos of like, I don't know, amusement park rides or whatever, then this would come in handy. But you can also use it as a mini tripod specifically for your, you know, your webcam and stuff. So you can push the height up of the neck right there and then you've got a mini tripod to put on your desk to use in various meetings or whatever. So that's everything that comes with the two-in-one mini tripod. Um, it's a nice accessory to have for your Insta360 cam. If you're using a laptop or something and you wanna get it away from your computer or you don't wanna mount it to the top of your monitor. In terms of the actual Insta360 itself, it comes with everything that you're gonna need to get up and running. Um, of course, it comes with the camera, it comes with the uh, USB-C cable itself, it comes with the USB-C to A adapter in case you're using an older computer that does not maybe have a USB-C or you don't have an available USB-C port. Um, it comes with recognition markers, four of them, and that's specifically for the whiteboard mode that I talked about, which is where you can put the markers on the corners of the whiteboard and when you enable whiteboard mode, it's then going to frame the whiteboard and track the whiteboard in view. That way, if you're doing say online lecturing, online classes, online teaching, you see this isn't just a live streaming tool for entertainment. It's also a business tool. It's also a teaching tool. And with all of the work from home, learn from home, and the amount of like from home stuff that we see now, having something like this is extremely valuable to have. So here's the camera right here on its uh, gimbal mount. It's surprisingly weighty. It's heavier than I expected it to be. I mean, obviously it's not too heavy. It doesn't fold the laptop lid down or anything like that. But if it's one of those things where if you're one of those people that's like weight equals quality, well then this is quality right here. And then you've got the accessories box. Inside we have our quick start guide. Um, we have our warranty information card. It tells you the link to how to go install the Insta360 Link software. Um, it also comes with their own USB-C cable, which again, like I said, is plenty long for most setups. If you have a monitor that has a USB hub built into it, then all it needs to do is reach from the top of the monitor to the back of it, uh, which I've showed many times is a worthwhile way to do it. It's a little less than one J arm span worth of length, uh, but it is USB-C on both sides. And then inside here, you get a USB-C A to USB-C adapter. So it'll work with any computer that has a standard USB A. And then we have our whiteboard markers right here. So you to put these markers in the corner 
each corner of the whiteboard. That way the camera knows where the whiteboard is and tracks it. I don't actually have a whiteboard to demonstrate that for you. So, you know, it's one of those things that you basically would just have to take their word for it. <clears throat> but I've watched some videos online of it already and it seems pretty awesome at tracking. Now that's everything that comes in the box. It's everything you need to get up and running. And what we're gonna do now is we are going to go ahead and get this guy set up. And then we do need to do a firmware update. Um, the software is actually really intuitive and easy to use. So let's get up and running so that we can, you know, show you guys all the AI features because that's where the real selling point of the Insta360 is, especially the Insta360 Link is well, there's so much that you can do with it. And it's almost like having a digital cameraman if you're a one-man crew. All right, so we're gonna go and take a tour of the Insta360 Link controller. This is the software that's built in uh, for being able to control your software. Now you are gonna be able to use, or be able to control your camera. Now you are gonna be able to use this in your favorite streaming software, whether it be OBS Studio or uh, whatever other labs and stuff exist. But there's a lot, there's so much functionality in this. I don't want this to be a long video, but I wanna give you some demonstrations of my favorite parts. Now, first and foremost, you might see an elbow pop in the screen. That's because Phil is filming the screen with our camera. We're not doing a screen cap here because we are doing a screen recording using, using the Insta360 controller. So what you're seeing in terms of the video quality and stuff is 100% out of straight out of camera and we are not doing any sort of like enhancements or anything to it. We are using just the software and we do intentionally have very dramatic lighting here. I have my key light shining on me. I'm wearing a black shirt, black darker background because I really want to see just how it's able to handle it. In fact, what I think we should do, honestly, Nick, going to come over here. We're going to lower my key light here because it's way above me just to try and illuminate my shirt a little bit more. So what I'm showing you here is how the camera is able to handle light. Go ahead and raise it back up slightly. It's a little bit too low now. There we go, right there is good. So we are in 4K mode. It does do 720p, 1080p, and 4K. And it's also an HDR camera, although it's worth pointing out that it does not do 4K HDR. It only does 1080p and 720p HDR. It also does 60 hertz and 60 frames per second. That way you can have nice smooth webcam imagery to go with your 60 FPS streams. You have this uh, D-pad here that you can use for like, zooming it in <laughs> and zooming it out. You can also control the position right, by using the D-pad there, up, yeah, up and down, obviously. Remember, it is a gimbal mount. It is not like digitally enhancing pixels. So a lot of cameras have this quote unquote, tilt, pan and zoom. All it's doing, honestly, is enhancing pixels or blowing them up or cropping the image and then fake moving it around. This is an actual gimbal that as I move it around on camera, in fact, if you if we show you guys with the FS5 here, as I wiggle it around, you can see the camera itself is moving. See that, it's an actual gimbal there. So if I go back to my position, watch, if I click J, I have these preset positions. So if I click that, that's where I'd already set it. I have one for Phil, so you guys can say, hi Phil. There's Phil actually filming the video. And then I've got one for studio, which is almost like a 180 degree the other direction. As you can see, there's our light, there's my, the studio back there where we edit the videos and stuff, and I can come right back to me. So this isn't even the AI function of the, of the Insta360 yet. This is just having preset positions. And, I'm, and you might think to yourself, why would you need this? If you've ever watched any of my live streams, you know, on Twitch anyway, you know I kind of go back and forth between guitar practice and playing games. And I have a very different seating position and like, wide angle experience that I want to give you for when I'm playing guitar so you can see the fretboard and the and the picking hand and all that. And then what I have to end up doing, you guys might notice when I say, okay, I'm done now, uh, I'll put the guitar away, I put on a pause, like stream will be right back. Cause what I have to do then is readjust the camera and get all positioned back to my sitting position while gaming. Well, now I could have my guitar position and I could have my sitting position and just have it literally be one click. So there's Phil. There's me. And let's go ahead and make another one right now so you can see how easy it is. So let's say this, just nice and zoomed in as like just a head cam. And you can, by the way, click the actual view window here and move it around. Keep in mind, it is inverted. So left is right and right is left. But let's say I wanted this extreme close up. I've seen some folks do this before too. We'll do extreme close up and we'll hit the plus and we'll call this right click rename extreme close up, just extreme close. There we go. So I could be like, doom, like that. And then we get like a raid, you'd be like, oh, raid. I don't know. I mean, you can, you can, you can get, Phil, uh, Phil's no longer dying in the background. He's now dying, dying he's dying in the foreground. <laughs> I don't know. That's all I could think of. But uh, for instance, if it were a guitar position, right? 
that's not a guitar position, but you could set it however you want it to be. Another instance here, let's say you do, you have a podcast and let's say you have multiple people talking and you don't want to sit there and have to like have a double split image or a cropped image. You could literally just have it be like, okay, Phil's talking. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Actually, I think that it's, <laughs> you know, it, it, it snaps pretty quickly. I wish there was some control to slow down how fast it snaps. That's one improvement to the software I think you could have. That way it's a more like controlled movement like a cameraman. So before we talk about AI, let's talk about image settings here. You get a lot of control. This is a half inch 4K sensor. That's a fairly big sensor given the size of the gimbal. Remember, the bigger the sensor, the more the light, the better the image. Now, one of the reasons why I have it as dramatic looking as we do right here is because I wanted to look for things like noise. Now, there is always going to be some noise. Even our very expensive FS5 creates noise in dark spaces. There is a limit to every single sensor. However, webcams are notorious for being garbage in dark areas. I think it looks pretty good considering the fact that we are not blasting a lot of light and I'm not being kind to it by having dark furniture, lots of shadows, and a dark black shirt on. And even some light in the background there with our little uh, LED light causing a lot for the sensor to have to handle. Now you do get full ISO control and shutter speed with a range, and it's, it's gonna go all dark right now, but you're looking at the screen anyway, a range of 1 30th to 1 8,000th. So if you were using this outside for any reason, then you would be able to really stop down, block out a lot of that light. Now you're gonna lose a lot of depth of field when you do that, but it is an F1.8 sensor. So it does give you a very good amount of depth of field. The background's not that far behind me, so you're not getting a huge depth of field there. Uh, but ISO control from 100 to 3200. Even at 3200, the noise isn't terrible. I mean, you can see there's obviously noise in the, uh, the anywhere there's a dark scene. But we're at ISO 3200 on a half inch sensor, sensor, which is actually pretty impressive. Now we're using, what, 640 right here for this shot. Not bad at all. You do have an exposure curve that you can adjust. I'm not gonna do that because I don't wanna mess up our scene. Auto white balance, we have controlled lighting here, so I'm not really using auto white balance, but you get from 10,000K to 2,000K. So <laughs> you can expose for some pretty severe situations. I'll put, actually 5450 looks better than 5150 did. Hmm, see, you can play around with it. That's what's awesome. Or you can just go auto. In my opinion, auto with our lighting makes me look a bit too yellow. So I personally like to adjust the white balance myself. So we'll put it 5400K. Brightness control, contrast control, saturation, and sharpness. You can really over sharpen if you want. You can also really soften the image if you want. So there's all of that. Now you can also save these as presets, as you can see right there with the toggle button. Now let's go ahead and talk about some of the auto controls right here. So gesture settings, we can do auto tracking, we can do auto zoom, we can do whiteboard mode. Whiteboard we're not gonna be showing today because like I said, we don't have a whiteboard. But what do these mean? We'll turn on gesture controls, we'll turn on auto tracking, and at this point, I should be able to put my hand up, it is now tracking me. So as I move around, it's kind of crazy. I mean, look at that, it's zooming in as I back up. That is crazy, <laughs> look at that. So the cool thing is that I can go right back to our preset positions, but let's say you're doing auto tracking, you can go uh, right off auto tracking back to your preset positions if you want it. Now tracking speed, fast, normal, and slow. Now I like slow because I feel like it's a little more natural than having it snap so quickly. But this, <clears throat> look, now let's talk about situations you'd use this. One, if you are doing any sort of VR live streams, or any sort of streams where you are up and about and moving around. There's a lot of live streams that use this type of, uh, of need. Now, for instance, when I'm up and moving around with the guitar and stuff, I'm constantly having to fiddle with it so you guys can see it. This would be awesome to be able to just adjust like how wide I want it to be, and then from there, just have it auto track what I'm doing. Now, when I say how wide I want it to be, check it out. We are set to the AI zoom to follow my head. You can also go half body, which is gonna by default start to zoom out. But even if I stand up, which is not a very flattering angle, there's my mic, right? Or we can go whole body, which will be hard for the location that it's currently at. It's not able to zoom out enough because I'm too close to the camera. But then there's head, right? Or we can go back to half body. It's, I'm asking a lot of the camera right now because of the fact that I'm standing up at an upward angle of it. But if I wanna also zoom in, check this out. Bring up my hand, make an L, 
and do it again. Zoom out, zoom in, and then track. Yes, that's how short Phil is. I'm up and walking around. Yeah, I know the audio is bad because the mic's all the way over there, but check this out. Now watch this. Right, the zoom function on this is really good. Now if I sit back down in my chair, come back to my desk, it's pretty neat. You know what, we're gonna go ahead and try this now as an example of the guitar stuff that I would do, like I said. I don't know if the guitar is in tune right now, but anyway, it's just on auto tracking at the moment. <laughs> Look at that. So as you can see right now, it's kind of cutting off a lot of my body. We're set to half body right now. If I go whole body, it's gonna be looking for my feet. Actually, whole body's better, look at that. And then head. Dude. <laughs> Now I'm gonna go ahead and push the autofocus to its limits right now. Um, I get, you can see there with the guitar how it kind of had a lot of dead space above me. That's where the rule of thirds would really come in and at least allow you to auto center the subject where you want it and then have it track based on where you put the face. As long as it knows where the face is, it can track the way it wants. I, I think that needs to be in a software upgrade. Anyway, moving on, we've got a white box here with, uh, you know, I'm gonna go, I think we're on head mode right now. Yeah, we're gonna go half body here which didn't really zoom out at all because I can't really see my body. So yeah, I, I think I'm at the limits of where it can really track it. The farther back you are, the, obviously the whole body will work better. But we have light blasting in a white box with fine black print with autofocus on right now. So let's see. Look at that. <laughs> Fast. Fast, look at that. And it's smooth. It's not like, it's not hunting. Webcams are notorious for focus hunting. But look how fast this is able to do it. Look at that. So you got about four inches as a minimum focus length. Look at that. So there, woo, it's still, dude. Wow. Jeez. What the heck? Look, look at the, look how close this is to the camera on the other camera. That's like nuts right there. So now we're starting to go blurry. So we're about our minimum focus length right there of four inches. Now watch how fast it finds me again. <laughs> That's actually pretty nuts. Now, right now it's not tracking me, as you can see. Um, if I wanted to track me, I put up the gesture for tracking. But anyway, it is also a gimbal. So if I start to tilt the screen down, check that out. It's like holding that position, which is pretty sick. So it's not just suddenly tilting down towards the desktop. Now, this is on a laptop. So if we use desktop mode, which is this button right here, which is intended to take your webcam and turn it into a downward shot and then it manipulates the distortion to make it look correct if you wanna do like unboxings or whatever. It'll make a lot more sense if you have this on a big panel. The problem is it's on a laptop and there's a keyboard screen right here. But if I click that, you can see it points it down and now we have like, you know, this, this downward angle. But you notice what it does is it also flips it around the other way. The problem is because we are so close to the table right here, you can see there's like this distortion effect on my arm and whatnot. It's just not fair for us to be doing this on a uh, on a laptop screen like this. If it was on a desktop screen that was flat, it would actually work a whole lot better. But it's a smart feature that allows you to be able to use it for, you know, things like unboxings and whatnot. That that way you don't have to feel like you have to have another camera. I, I felt like this was like a this was a full feature set of nice to haves, but nothing that anyone really needs. But this is this is my new webcam. I'm sold on it because I, if I just did one thing of never having to move on my, my live streaming area, then having a statically set webcam is fine. 
but I move all around. Do you guys remember the VR stream where uh, we were playing Phasmophobia in VR and I was crawling around on the floor and accidentally like got somehow under my desk and then tried to stand up and was like, bam! Guess what? With tracking, get it to track. If I were like down here crawling around on the floor, it would have seen me go, Pff! Ah! But you saw how, you know, how quickly it was able to, to follow, follow the tracking. I mean, it's kind of nuts, right? So track me, zoom in. And now we're set. And now it's gonna track me at that zoom range. That's like Alfred Hitchcock. Again, zoom out. The gesturing works really well, actually. And then we can go back to gimbal control and just go right back to over here. Here's the J position. Actually, I think I was like right here. There's the fill position, the studio position, and the, oh my God! It's gonna be a live stream of me just screwing around with the camera. All right, guys, I'll put a link down in the description below. You guys can check it out. It is actually pretty incredible. I, this is not something I thought I needed or wanted even. And you know, it. I guess it's up for you guys to decide. If you look at the price of this, it's funny because it's not that much more than a, than a stupid webcam that doesn't do any of this sort of stuff. And you don't need it for just webcam. We're, we are using it right now as our main camera for this video. And the thing is, we think it looks fine, perfectly fine. I mean, you, you don't need a $6,000 camera body or even a camera at this point. Hey, Phil, we find a way to make this work on our FS5, you're out of a job. Stop tracking. <laughs> Oh, it is tracking you. <laughs> hey, you just stole the tracking. Good. <laughs> what the? I'm gonna go back to my actual job now. <laughs> 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 <laughs>